What's up, everybody? Well, I got a Alienware M18 AMD 7900M update video for you guys today and talked to Dell and they were very nice, very apologetic, and they're going to send me a new one of these in the exact same spec. You know, didn't even have to fight. I was a little worried they were gonna, you know, be like, oh, just send it to us and we'll try and fix it. And I was like, oh, I already don't trust this. As far as I'm concerned, this already feels like a lemon car, you know? You take it, they fix it, something else just breaks, you know? And who knows, that might happen no matter what. If I get the next one and I have problems, I'm done. I'm, as much as I wanna show off and do some uh, 7900M videos since there's not that many, uh, no. I will just have to go with like a 4090 or something like that. Maybe I'll go get that X3D chip. Or there's this one really cool Asus that had like a 4090 and like a 1000 nit like mini LED display or something. That one also looked pretty cool. So I don't know what I'll do, but hopefully the next Alienware will be good. But anyway, I figured while I have it and I can't do any gaming benchmarks or whatever, I figured we could do some CPU benchmarks at various uh, power settings, you know, like silent, balanced, performance, what have you. It's got a very similar setup to my old G15 Advantage with the Alienware Command Center. So I figured we could do that. My I mean, why waste time with the thing making a couple videos on it? And I figure some people are curious about the CPU side of it. I know we did a little bit of CPU in the, what should we call it, unboxing video, but a lot of the times I only do like one thing in there real quick, you know? So I think I just left it in balance mode the whole time. So anyway, why don't we go ahead and get started here? But I guess before I do, let's really quickly go over the uh, benchmarks we're gonna go over. I figured we would do some CPU Z with that benchmark at various different CPU uh, wattage settings and stuff. Same thing with Cinebench. And then we can finish up with some Geekbench 6. So why don't we go ahead and go and get started here. I figured to start with, we would go ahead and start with the lowest setting, which would be quiet. I mean, I think there's this battery thing, but I think that's just I don't know, that's probably like battery saver mode where it'll be so slow it can't even do anything. So I feel like quiet is about as low as most people with this thing would go anyway. So we'll do quiet, then we'll do balanced, and then performance. And I think there's one thing after. And then there's overdrive. So we can try all of those different settings just to see what it does. I think that would be at least a pretty fun test, don't you guys? So let's not waste any more time. Let's open up some CPU-Z. I'll get started on the benchmarking and I'm not gonna force you guys to watch every benchmark all the way through. That would be A, boring, and B, make the video way too freaking long. So let's go and I'll run the benchmark and then we'll be back. All right, well, I tried to hook it up to the capture computer to get this stuff, but all I had at the moment was a USB-C to HDMI cable. I tried to find some more, but I guess I'm fresh out of HDMI cables. So I figured, well, best next best case thing I can do next is grab my camera, try to hold it as steady as possible, and show you the results here. So, for single core on quiet, we got 752, and for multi, we got 14360.9. So, now, like I said, we'll go up it to balanced, test it again, and go on and so forth. So now on balanced, we got 751.6 for single, but I think we lost a little on multi at 14,255.7, but that might be within margin of error. I'm not 100%. So now on to the next one, which I believe is performance. Now on performance, we got single core 755.0, and on multi, we we're at 14,352.9. So I think that's the highest so far. Definitely on the single, and I'm pretty sure on the multi. But now we got one more to test on this benchmark, so let's get to it. So now with overdrive mode, for multi we got 14,469.5, and we got 763 for single. So we definitely got the fastest on this because it just maxes the fans out for optimum cooling, but that is pretty loud. I would say that's as loud, if not slightly louder, than my Asus G15 Advantage. I don't know if you guys can hear it with my thing, so let me grab my mic and get it a little closer. See what I mean? Pretty loud, but anyway, let's move on to the next test. So, on silent in Cinebench 2024, we got 1,707 points for multi, and then for single, we got 110 points 
which it beat the M1s in multi, but it couldn't quite beat them out in single. But again, this is also a Gen 1 M or a Gen 1 of these apples. They're, like, they're on the M3 now, so I don't know how much better those get. So just mentioning that, though. So why don't we go ahead and run it with the uh, balanced setting now? The only unfortunate thing is, for me, this takes like 25 minutes per test. But luckily, it's very easy to just, you know, get the camera footage at the end. So it's not like it's hard work, but it does take some time. But I figured a lot of people would appreciate it. So anyway, let's get on to the next one. So now we got done with the balanced setting Cinebench 2024 run. And we got ourselves 1740 multi. So it went up a little bit there. And I think we went up one or two points on the single core, but we're still losing out to the uh, to the Apple Silicon for now. Although I could have sworn I won last time with like a 114 or something like that, but it is what it is. Let's now go ahead and test out the next one. So now we're done with performance on Cinebench here. And we got 1757 for multi and the same 111 for single. So we don't seem to be getting too much more in the single core department here. But let's see if that changes the last one. We still got overdrive. But I think that's really just the same as this. The same settings as performance, but with max fans to keep it cooler. So maybe with a little more cooling, it'll give us a little bit better scores. So let's go do that. And then we'll move on to Geekbench after this. So now for the overdrive uh, benchmark results here. We got 1,762, which is basically the same as it was on performance. And single core was 112. So we got one more point, but that could be there within the realm of error, who knows. But in any case, why don't we now go ahead and move on to the next benchmark. So now here's Geekbench 6 result on silent mode, or quiet mode in this guy, guy's case. So we got 2785 single core and 16,314 for multi. So that's pretty, that's pretty decent for a laptop. So let's see how much it changes by going up to balanced. So here's the run on Geekbench 6 on balanced. And we got 2814 for single this time. So we got a little better there. And then multi-core is 16,136. So I'm pretty sure it went lower now, didn't it? Wasn't it like 16,200 and something before? Maybe I'm wrong, but regardless, very close to the same and definitely a little bit more single core. So now let's go ahead and pump it up to performance and see what that nets us. Well, I was not expecting that. Single core is only 2675 this time on performance, but we got 16,258 for multi-core. So I think that's a teeny bit better than before, but not my a whole lot. So now we will try to do uh, overdrive, but that's just maxing it out with the same settings beyond that. So I don't think we'll get much different scores than this, but I'm curious anyway. So let's go find out, shall we? So now on overdrive, we got 2852 and 1662, or I mean 16,672, excuse me. So that one's definitely the best. I wonder what was up with performance. I wonder why that one's single core is so low. Maybe it was just a random kerfuffle or whatever. But in any case, I couldn't really think of any other CPU intensive stuff to do, so. I figured why don't we go ahead and go in this video. Well, all right, guys, that's about all for the CPU benchmarks, at least the ones that I could think of. If you guys can think of any other videos you'd like to see me do on this that don't require use of the dedicated 6800M, just let me know, because I'll still have this for a little while, I think 24 to 48 hours before they tell me what to do with it, and probably I'm guessing they're gonna print me off a shipping label and I'll just put it back into its box and that other box that's a box of box it came with and tape it back up, slap the shipping label over the one I had and be good to go. But in any case though, like I said, anybody got any more things they'd like to know about it or anything else they'd like me to run on it that doesn't require actual gaming, just let me know in a comment or something. But in any case, that's all I got for you guys for this particular video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video though, cause I sure as hell enjoyed making it for you guys. And until the next video, peace out guys.